Hello and uh, welcome to my PlatformCon 2023 presentation on FinOps platform products. My name is Ajay Shankramath. I head up the platform engineering team at ThoughtWorks North America. So let's first talk about what are we going to discuss today. This is not going to be a presentation on FinOps, nor is it going to be a presentation about platforms. Uh, instead, uh, what I want to talk to you today is about why should we be using platforms for solving uh, the FinOps problems that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. And we'll talk about what does it entail to. It's going to be a use case based approach. So we'll show you some use cases where uh, we have actually seen this problem. So it becomes easier to understand uh, why the pla platform approach should be there. If you're not familiar with the concept of FinOps, uh, please check out the great O'Reilly book by JR uh, and uh, Mike or you can check out finops.org too, which has got a lot of information that might be useful to you. So let's first talk about what problem are we trying to solve? Um, we know that the cloud usage has exploded over the past few years. Um, significant amount of spending in IT is happening in the cloud. We also know that majority of the uh, people are actually using cloud. You know, there are very few people who don't use cloud these days who are digital natives. And uh, without optimization, we know that it is a pretty bad idea to continue using the cloud assets because you have significant amounts of wastage happening through that. Um, this is the context of the fact that majority of your uh, software investments are also happening on the cloud. So there's no, it should not be a surprise, the fact that more than $500 billion is going to be our cloud migration services market by 2027 or so. Uh, but the most alarming piece of data that you would see here is the fact that if you talk to um, uh, the majority of the business executives who actually are involved in this, they believe that about 66% of them believe that cloud has not really um, given them the, the savings that they have been looking for. I mean, you might turn around and ask like, you know, wasn't cloud always supposed to be a move from CapEx to OpEx? You know, isn't this something that um, you know, su supposed to just move the money and make your business better by improving your revenues. Yes, that's absolutely true. But the question is, does it matter? If you tell your customers about some of those things, are they really going to be um, not wanting to save money? So saving money or optimizing your cloud investments is a huge thing for pretty much everybody using this. Now, let's talk about the um, FinOps problem and where does the platform comes in? Just like solving any other problem, the approach that you would be taking is first start with a specific environment, um, look at it, understand what kind of you know, issues are there in that. Try and get more data by doing a deeper analysis and try and understand like, is uh, are, do we know exactly what might be going on within that space? Then you can always uh, try and build the solutions. However you build the solutions doesn't matter. You end up doing some level of automation, some level of manual activities, but you end up building some kind of an automation to optimize this. Once you do that, then you move into this phase of your BAU and you want to try and make sure that whatever you optimized becomes the standard way of operating things. So within the FinOps community, the way uh, we talk about this is that there is this inform, optimize, operate cycle that really tells you all the things that we just spoke about. And that's interesting because platforms are fairly prevalent in that, especially in the inform area. So if you look at the inform space where, where you're really trying to increase your visibility of the problems and try and make sure that you know exactly what the problems are, commercial off-the-shelf platforms are a lot. So this is available today. But if you look at the optimized phase, there is like minimal platform inroads in that, in that space. You, you can really find what the problems are, there's platforms for it, but to solve the problems, it's still up to you as an organization to try and fix it. So whose problem is it to solve it? Is it a finance problem? You know, we typically uh, look at uh, FinOps in a more traditional way as a finance problem uh, for, for all the obvious reasons. Uh, but if you really look at it from the point of view of how product management teams are uh, setting the roadmap for their products and their life cycle of the products, uh, you know, don't they really want to know about the cost of their solutions? So it could it, could it be a product problem? But you know, in reality, what we see is that it's mostly the technologists who actually make the decisions on uh, using the right kind of cloud services. So it could be their problem too. So in order to solve this problem, 
what this really tells us is that it is something that all three parties have to have some involvement or the other. So now let's talk about why do we need to do, solve this problem? So this is where we really start going back to the uh, concepts that we looked at earlier, getting the data, finding the problems, and then solving the problems. Right? So at the level of looking at um, collecting the data, the kind of data that we are, we are really talking about here are things like, uh, what's the cloud utilization? What's the kind of finance data? What's your bud in the business data? What's the observability data coming from your system? So all that kind of information is extremely critical for you to figure out what the problems are. But once you do that, you really start thinking about what are your automation priorities? How are you actually going to automate it so that you can solve this problem better? And the first problem that you see here is the fact that the data that is collected, the priority of the data that's collected, and the kind of ease at which we are collecting the data is not typically an organization's automation priorities. They are all, all, always automating things like your anomaly detection, your usage reports, your compliance reports, and things like that. But those really does not map, up, map with the exact kind of data that is available. What makes it even more interesting is that if you think about, um, if you do some kind of a value analysis of the kind of problems that would provide you the biggest ROI, you see that the remediation priorities, things like, you know, you must have heard of thinking about tagging all your resources, you know, making sure that you, you have a culture of FinOps so that everybody takes responsibility for what they should be doing or, and the right the kind of right decision to make, or things like right-sizing your resources. Those things are your remediation priorities and those typically don't match up with your automation priorities either. And to make matters worse, if you really look at your overall maturity of your product uh, and overall maturity of your FinOps approach, the kind of things that you should be thinking about are things like unique cost economics, right? I mean, because this is a concept where, you know, you know exactly what a particular application is using up from a cloud resource point of view so that you have a better idea of whether you should be doing that spend or not. But, you know, that, that's one example. Other things are, again, things like budgeting and the decision-making and all that. The priority of those things are not aligned either. So this data is actually directly from uh, FinOps Foundation, finops.org. You can check out data.finops.org to see a lot more detailed analysis of some of this information. And we have also found this from a lot of our internal experiments and working with a lot of our clients. So uh, let's look at some of the heat map of the most common customer problems, right? So this is when we have actually worked with many clients to solve these problems. We found that there are five classes of issues that a customer see. Uh, the number one, like we talked about the data related one. The second one is more of an organizational alignment issue. The third one is like, how are you setting up your pipelines, your, your DevOps processes, your overall CI, CD and things like that. What are you actually doing with that? Then you have your overall platform operating model also as one of the challenges there. Uh, then the sustainability aspects is becoming much more prevalent these days where you really start thinking about, you know, can we actually do something that is more environmentally friendly, more sustainable as opposed to, can we just use the cloud the best um, in the most cost effective way possible? So all of these things are anchored in the FinOps core principles. So FinOps has six core, six core principles and SAR anchored in that. And uh, we use sort of uh, proven platform operating principles and then and the practice capabilities to make sure that these things are understood. Um, so if you look at all of that, what you find is that these things, what we just saw earlier, sort of maps into a much more detailed set of challenges that we see from our clients. I don't want to go into all the details around it, but I just wanted to show you as to what those things are. So what you're really talking about is like things like, you know, within the data space, uh, things like, you know, what are the, um, you know, specific cloud costs um, that will increase over time? We all know that cloud costs increase over time because your usage increases. So it's not easy to see what's happening. So figuring out correlation there, the awareness of your reports, right? And then uh, things like, um, are the reporting simple enough for you, for everybody to understand that? Are we getting the reports at the right time? Uh, then you're really also thinking about what are the types of costs that are involved in it? So the, all these things really tells you a lot about what are the kind of issues that you know, clients see when they start solving this problem. The, the other thing is uh, from the point of view of your organizational alignment point of view, 
are you aligned as an organization? Or do you have the right kind of culture with respect to you when you're, if you are using a DevOps culture, you know, making sure that your developers are empowered, your engineers are effective to produce what they need? Uh, or do you have the right kind of team structures, things like that? On the pipeline side of things, uh, we have, again, lots of challenges that we see with respect to standardized reporting, as well as um, you know, the right kind of chargebacks. You know, are you actually having the right kind of compliance built into every uh, step of the way? Then when you really look at your platform operating model, you can see that there are challenges with respect to self-managing your resources, uh, as well as doing the right sizing and making sure that your product, you know, whatever product that you're building within the space has got the right level of maturity in there. Then we uh, talked about the concept of sustainability, where we really talk about things like green ops and trying to make sure that your emissions are mapped properly and all that. So as the reason I showed you all of this is just to give you a feel for what are those five areas? What are the kind of challenges that customers typically see within these five areas? Now, let's get into the actual platform implementation of this. So you see that uh, anytime you build a platform, there are some core platform capabilities that you need to have. So let's talk about this as number one is probably cognitive load. We hear, about, hear a lot about that these days with respect to how can we make your developer's life easier by making sure that they don't have to worry about the things that they shouldn't be worrying about. Then the overall efficiency of your process. Uh, then, you know, the, okay, are you agile enough, right? I mean, so with, you know, with that, what we mean is, are you really trying to make sure that, um, you know, whether your organization can tap into the uh, the requirements of the business, you know, in a, in a fast enough manner. Uh, the two other capabilities that you're always be going to be thinking about when you're building a platform are replaceability and composability. Replaceability from the point of view of the fact that you have a lot of additional integrations that you would be building as part of a system like this. So are you? how easy is it for you to replace some of those components? Then you also have to think about from a composability point of view. The shape of your platform as you see today will not be the shape of your platform tomorrow. So you might be integrating different, you might be composing your system using different components. So are you able to do all of that? So this is uh, essentially, as you can see, it sort of maps into various details as you might actually have to look into for um, making sure that these capabilities are available. So um, with, with, you know, with that in mind, let's look at a blueprint of a finance platform. So let's assume that the, the fundamental piece of there is you know, a set of cloud services that you get from some kind of a cloud service provider. Great. The next step in the process is uh, your cloud migration analysis accelerator. So this is uh, these are the set of tools that we talked about earlier when we talked about the, the in, inform uh, part of our um, FinOps lifecycle, uh, where you can really use some of the platforms, some of the tools that's out there to tell you what the problems are in a much more detailed manner than what a cloud service provider would tell you. Uh, in addition to that, you will also have some kind of an observability platform in your organization. So you want to make sure that that observability capabilities are available uh, and integrated well with your cloud service provider data. Now, um, once you do that, the next thing to look for is what are those essential capabilities that you should have uh, you know, when you're building the FinOps platform? Uh, from our point of view, there are uh, five uh, different categories. Uh, what we call as the core capabilities, um, then metrics related, uh, alerting and notifications policies and automated governance. So within each of this space, you can see that the actual capabilities that are being, that needs to be built are things that will solve the problems that we talked about earlier. So you can see that a platform as a whole sort of comes together when you really start making sure that you have a composable set of capabilities that you can really plug and play into this overall ecosystem. Uh, but not to forget the fact that FinOps is ultimately an organizational issue, like we talked about. So if you talk about it from an organizational point of view, are there cultural aggregators that you can codify? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. So that has to be an essential component of how you build a FinOps platform. With that in mind, you also have to make sure that your system has to be like API friendly. It has to be API first way of building it. Um, and this is extremely important because this is what really determines whether your data is going to be real time, where your actionable insights are going to be real time or fast enough. So that is the, the, the other component of it. So um, as you go through your 
uh, FinOps platform product journey, uh, what we recommend is a step-by-step -step evolution of the process. Um, this is no different from building any other platform products. So building a FinOps platform product is going, not going to be any different. So you start with your core business problems. We talked about those, what those business problems are. And then you start doing some sort of a value-based prioritization of these capabilities. Then once you do that, you know what you should be prioritizing. Then start mapping that into the remediation priorities. So you remember the, the slide that we saw earlier where your remediation priorities and automation priorities were not matching up. This is the place you really start mapping that. And if, ultimately, try and make everything data-driven. If your data tells you something, believe that, right? Because that's exactly uh, what you should be doing to get the, the biggest bang for the buck. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the APIs earlier. So we are really trying to make sure that anything that you build is programmatically controlled so that you have better chance of uh, improving the adoption of this platform. And that is exactly how you really get to that ultimate uh, point where you're really going to uh, have your platform product ready. So if you have more questions, um, definitely reach out to me. Um, and uh, you might also want to check out a couple of offerings that we have from ThoughtWorks um, on the FinOps platforms, as well as how to improve the engineering effectiveness. Um, because ultimately, this problem really ties back into how your engineers can be more effective, should be more effective to uh, make sure that your organization as a whole is delivering more. Um, and um, I'm sure you are quite familiar with uh, some of the work done by my colleague and uh, chief scientist of ThoughtWorks, uh, Martin Fowler. So check out Martin's blogs for some really interesting articles in the space. Thank you. Goodbye.